have a process. I would have a script and stick to it. Repetition is king. You're going to get kicked in the face. You are. Sales is 70% mind, 30% skill. Being able to go from no to no to no to no to no to no to a yes. And then being okay from a no to a no to a no to a yes. It takes an individual that has a strong mind to be able to do that consistently over a long period of time. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Max Maxwell Show. You know, if you're into real estate, you're into personal finance, or just development in yourself, this is the place for you. And today, I got a guest that has a story to tell, and I want to listen. Now, if you know my style of podcasting, I don't go ask a bunch of questions. I don't send a question and answer sheet. Matter of fact, my team doesn't even research the person and give me things to ask. This is off the top of my head. The Max Maxwell Show is simply... I want to get to know this person, and that's why I don't have a ton of guests, because I truly want to get to know this person and what they're all about. But this guy is right up the street from me in the Raleigh area. He is, he's, he's got some stats that are amazing. And what I mean by he's built sales teams and had companies that were making so much money, 100 plus million in sales. He's also a real estate investor and one of the new guys on the block. So you probably haven't heard too much about him. But welcome to the Max Maxwell Show, my guy, Eric. What's up, man? What's going on, Max? Bro, that, I, that intro was kind of out there, man. That was kind sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're up the street from me. Yeah. Hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Welcome to North Carolina, because you're kind of like a new new, new uh, resident in North Carolina, kind of, right? Just over a year. Just over a year. So you're, yeah. so you're a new one. You're a new one. Coming from where? South Florida. So flow. Yeah. I like South Florida. I did. But now that I'm here, you love it here. I tell my wife, this is this is heaven on earth here in North Carolina. Now let's talk about that for a second because a lot of people ask me, wait, Max, I didn't know you were from North, living in North Carolina. I thought you were in Texas or something. Why do you love North Carolina compared to like South Florida? First and foremost, the people. Mm -hmm. The people are still Nicer. got that hospitality, that southern comfort, mm -hmm. that just good people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they hold the door open for you. <laughs> I haven't had that in a long time. Um, the f green fluffy trees. Yeah. The, uh, the, the mountains, the beach is close. All the traffic is not bad. Mm -hmm. Um, great place to raise my, my, my son. Yeah, that's true. So many, so many, the list goes on and on. My wife loves it. That's a plus. My wife loves it. I didn't, I never thought she'd leave South Florida Born and raised, she was born and raised in South Florida, and she picked this place. And uh, I, we've been here just shy of a year and a half. Not a day has went by where I've regretted moving here. That's awesome, man. I welcome you to North Carolina. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad somebody else realizes that, yeah, it's, it's a little bit slower than the places like your New Yorks, your LAs, your South Floridas, but... You get a lot more bang for your buck. Yep. That's important as somebody that's an investor and somebody that just wants to live. It's a good place to raise a family. You get some peace and quiet and, and you have some type of like a sense of neighborhood when you live in one. Yeah. Right. If that sure. makes sense. It does. So, man, welcome, 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 man. So tell me, tell me a little bit about you. So you originally from South Florida? Right outside of Chicago, Illinois. What part? What was the place there? Rockford. Rock. I know Rockford. Do you really? I really know Rockford. Okay, not a lot of people do. That's why I say Chicago. I know, I know Rockford because my good friend Jameson's from up that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rockford, Illinois. Yeah, Rockford, Illinois. That's crazy. Illinois, there's not two of them. That's true, Illinois. Yeah. No <laughs> Illinois. Make a lot of noise. <laughs> I always do that. I know, most people do. So you've, uh, you've had a company that's done, I mean, first of all, you're, you're, you're a sales guy. And I don't say that about a lot of people. Like I'm watching you, I I know you're real. Like I I can what the numbers you're saying are real. Are real. They're not fake. They're not fake. And I'll, we'll get to how I know. Yeah. But that that your numbers are real. Yeah. Tell me tell me before you got to be a real estate. Tell me before you got into wholesaling. So going back to started my very first business January fourth of two thousand twelve. Okay. So ten years ago. That's not that long ago. Not at all. 
And uh, within, it was in the timeshare exit space, had no clue what a timeshare was, didn't know how to exit a timeshare. Someone brought the model to me and I had been working with a, um, for in a call center for Mm -hmm. about a year and a half. It come from a background of construction. So sales was not in my, yeah. you know, something that I had done. So, so you were, you were a construction, you worked in construction and then in a call center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, the reason is I had went down to South Florida at 28 to check myself into a treatment center. Okay. Kick a, kick a long overdue drug problem that I had. Okay. Got it. And uh, so I go to South Florida and I couldn't find a job in the construction field. So I jumped into a call center Yeah, and I got real good being, cause I didn't want to do face to face sales. I was insecure yeah. at the time, all my tattoos, thought mm-hmm. people would judge me. So I, I hid behind a phone. Now that's what makes you stand out. Now that's what makes me stand out. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I got real good at being behind a phone and using my voice tonalities and all that to, I could be whoever I wanted to be. And yeah. it felt real good to do that. And I got, I got good working for this company, started my own business out of a bedroom. Yeah. And my wife and I grew that in nine years to, uh, the, we were the largest timeshare exit company in the United States of America, uh, had over 150 people on our team, all under one roof. Um, and we were getting ready to exit the company for a substantial amount of money and some things went. So different direction. Yeah. So, so, so let me back up for a second and I don't want to, I don't want to dwell and hover over this, Yeah. but when you went to go check yourself into a treatment facility, just for people out there that who may be struggling with any type of addiction themselves, what, what pushed you to that? Were there people that helped you get to that point where you realized, or was it something that you knew that, look, I got to go to get something done? Yeah. So I am as about as open as you can get when yeah. it comes to my addiction. Yeah. Cause I, I, I struggled with it for so long. Mm-hmm. And if I could just hear maybe one message of someone that was able to, to beat it. So for me from 13 to 28 years old, uh, I tried everything under the sun. Uh, the drug that brought me to my knees was uh, crack cocaine. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was running the streets of Chicago, um, in places I shouldn't have been. And, uh, for me, I had tried multiple times getting clean for other people yeah, or trying to save a job or a girlfriend or whatever the case was. Uh, and it never worked cause I was doing it for someone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this last go around, it was August. Uh, I have it tattooed on my knuckles, August 9th, 2009. Uh, it was life or death for me. So it was the first time that I tried getting clean for myself. It's cause I didn't want to die. I wanted to live. So you, so doing it for yourself was the key for you. I had to do it. I had to hit my bottom. Got it. And so I noticed 2009, you started your first company in 2012. Yeah. There's that gap. So in that time you got, you got well. Yeah. You got, you got good. And somebody brought you this timeshare exit space. Now let's hold on a second. Timeshare exit. What are you talking about, bro? Getting people out of a timeshare. That's exactly what I heard or my reaction when someone brought me the model, it was just lead gen and sales. I figured out how to get someone out after I got people to say I needed out. So like I'm a, just like how I did the wholesale model. I don't know, didn't know much about real estate. Still don't know a whole lot about real estate. (laughs) But crushing it. Yeah, but it was, I'll figure it out. Let me, let me get some contract signed. Then I'll figure out the fulfillment side of Mm -hmm. it. And, uh, started just pounding the cold call and some timeshare on saying, you want to get out of a timeshare. And, uh, obviously there was a lot more that went into it than that, but, uh, yeah, we just grew a behemoth of a company. So people sign up for timeshares for, well, here's what I know about timeshares, which is not much. Yeah. I know that like, if you go to a beach yeah. and they give you a free night at a hotel or two. Yeah. You got to listen to this timeshare pitch. 90 minute presentation. So a 90 minute presentation on timesharing. Yep. And then some people pull out their credit cards and buy it. Is that how it works? Is is a timeshare like you got to pay a certain amount of money each month or year? So it's a shared type of membership. You don't ever own anything. Okay. Um, And it's, they, you got to... They target, and again, this is just my opinion. Yeah. They target a consumer that can't afford to pay 25 grand up front. So it's in-house finance. The paper is. 
Wow. So they, you know, and it's anywhere from 11 to, I think it's like 21.9% interest. They Right, they at, the, right at the most you can possibly do, I think, yep. in America. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it, we would help people, you know, people don't go in and buy a timeshare. People are sold a timeshare. You don't go in and say, I want a timeshare. <laughs> I don't think, I've never heard of that. No, you Let's don't, just don't do it. timeshares today. You are sold a timeshare. So that, that's amazing. It, and timeshares are still legal. Basically. Still cranking hot right now. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not allowed to help people out of timeshares no more. Yeah. Because you talked about, you're about to exit your company. Yeah. And, and, and you got sued. Yeah, we were getting ready to sell 51% for 54 million. We were going to retain 49% for the second exit. You were about to get an entrepreneur Super Bowl ring. It was 60 days away, man. Oh, changed yeah. everything for you. Yeah, yeah. Lost everything? No. Lost a lot. Lost a lot. Lost a lot. And yeah. lost, lost your cash flow, your thing that you know how to make money in. Cash flow. For a while, you know, it was a shot to the ego and, you know, I was, I was the business. The business was me and I was the business. And uh, when that had gotten taken, it took me a year and a half to realize, it took me about a year, Max, to realize they took the money, they took some money, they took the business, they didn't take my family, and they didn't take what I had up here. You already learned a skill. Not no call center joint. They you did learned. not take this. Yeah. I learned a lot in that time of building that so business. I want to back up. When did you get married? My wife and I got married in, uh, it was, we've been married now thir going on 12 years. Yeah, 12 years, man. Okay. Together, 13. So you got married right after you got clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's she's been with me day one. So to you as an entrepreneur, I consider you successful. You've done what most people dream to do. You almost put on a super, you like in the uh, playoffs. Yeah, You were at the playoffs down to a field goal and, somebody, and the kicker had one job. Yeah, that's it. And so you, you almost sold your business for some life-changing amount of money. Yep. You, went, you, you were in rehab prior to that. You get married. And you're still married. Yeah. How important as an entrepreneur was having that spouse there for you personally? I say when cameras on or off. Yeah. My my wife, without my wife, I truly don't know where I'd be. I believe that because you've talked to her about her about 58 times, I think it is so yeah, far today. I don't know, man. She's my she, like people say I got a ride or die. I got a ride or die. I really do. She she saw me three days before I got out of treatment. I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I literally nothing. I had two pairs of uh, shorts and two white Hanes t-shirts <laughs> that someone bought for me to to fly me down to treatment. I had nothing, and she's been with me since that day. And you guys grew a massive company. Yeah. Right. You go through a lawsuit that would split anybody up. And it it tried us, man. Yeah. It tried us. And. Now you're back with a vengeance. Back. <laughs> back. I like it, man. What it took, what it took me, uh, us, because she's my business partner today. Yeah, yeah. And I have, I have another business partner, Tony. But what it took me and her to do the first go around, it took us about three years to hit, you know, th roughly three million. Uh, we did it in 12, 12 months. 12 months, $3 million. 2.6, but... Man, we were right, right there. Yeah, three million. We'll, 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 we'll we can call that. it three million. So, how did you find out about wholesaling to begin with? So, um, I had some buddies in Orlando that had been doing this for years, mm -hmm. and uh, when I got out of that timeshare space, they were hounding me like, "Eric, this is right up your alley. You should do this wholesale model," and I, I didn't believe it. Like, I, I went and tried. I started another business by cashing out people's annuities again phone sales did that for 14 months and then um no a little less than a year i think and then uh didn't like it didn't have my heart mm -hmm. wasn't uh i wasn't passionate about it and my buddies kept saying eric 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 go to 
you know, look into this wholesale model. And one day I was like, F it, I'm going to do it. Shut off the switch of that business, opened up another one. And, uh, I say the, the wholesale industry has lit in a spark under my, under my behind Mm -hmm. that I haven't had lit in in a while. That feeling. It's that feeling. And, uh, I, I love it. I'm, I'm super passionate where I'm at right now. And, uh, I'm just going, going hard, man. You remember, you, remember the first, you remember the first one? I do, but I'm going to be honest, Max. It was nothing but a transaction to me, man. It was, yeah. But it was it a proof of proof of concept? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And it as good as I, as good as it, I'm always learning, but I'm good at sales. Yeah. Yeah. Own it. Own it. Right. I'm good at sales. <laughs> and, uh, like there was a minute there. I was like, man, are people really going to sell me a house over a phone? Why they keep saying no? Why are they rejecting my offers? Like I didn't, I don't care what level you're at. You can still get frustrated still and want to be a doubt. There you go. There's doubt. As soon as that first one, it was, it was the hit. It was the hit I needed. And then obviously since then it's just. So you, did you start in Raleigh or you started in Florida? I started in Florida just out of a, my bedroom. Room. Where, yeah, yeah, house. Literally. Yeah. yeah. And then how did you, did you do it for a while in Florida and then move to, move to, uh, move this area? 30 days went to, had my wife called a live midlife crisis. I thought I wanted to move back home to, to Rockford, Illinois. No. And she's like, yo, you can go. I ain't going. <laughs> she packed up a big old U-Haul for me. Got me a town home packed in Rockford. I was there 60 days. She came back, packed me up against That's a small her. town. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. It's rough. Yeah. Um, it's always home, but it, it ain't nowhere for me to go back to. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we wanted to, I, I, I knew I wanted to leave South Florida, didn't know where I wanted to go. My wife picked Raleigh and this is where we ended up landing. Smart woman. She's honestly, dude, yeah. this, this place, it, like we don't need to spend all day talking about Raleigh yeah. or North Carolina, but it, it is, it's amazing for me. First 60 days had anxiety because it was a slow pace yeah. that I wasn't used to. Some readjustment. There was a readjustment for me, but uh, I'm I'm catching my stride here. So you're not you're you're sitting in you moving to North Carolina, but you've already been doing multi. You you're, you came in the game saying I'm going to do wholesaling and investing in different states off the gate. Right out the right day one, I was in five states. Not one of them was in my, my backyard. Nice. Yeah. You know what's cool to hear you say is. Some of the things you're saying when we were just having lunch earlier about how simple you look at this business reminds me of when I first started making videos Mm -hmm. and I started telling people how simple to keep this business. Yeah. It it's you. You told me at lunch that you mainly use one type of list. Absentee owner data. Absentee owner data. That's That's it. it. And then I keep popping. And and me and you had a conversation that says people make wholesaling complex so they can sell you something. Yeah. And they also go from list to list to list to list to list because their lack of closing skills. Yep. Man. It's it's a very simple model that unfortunately has been way overcomplicated. I'm I'm not a and, and I don't discredit myself. I'm but I'm not a super smart guy. That's why I tell people about myself all the time. I'm like, if it ain't in crayon language, (laughs) I'm not going to understand it. So that's what I did with the wholesaling model. I just kept it super simple. What if you had to give three rules Mm -hmm. to being able to close like you close or sell like you sell, what would they be? Three fundamental things for closing. Well, for sales in general, let's okay. just start there. Let's yep. sales in general. What are three fundamental things? Have a process, a sales process. Um, I would have a script and stick to it. And then um, repetition is king. Mm-hmm. Repetition is king. So you're going to get kicked in the face. You're going to get kicked in the face. You are. Um, sales is, I would say, I'm just going to throw numbers out there just because. I'd say it's 70% mind, 30% skill, Mm. mindset, being able to go from no to no to no to no to no to no to a yes. And then being okay from a no to a no to a no to a yes. 
that it, it takes an individual that has a strong mind to be able to do that consistently over a long period of time. And I've been doing it for 13 years over the phone. But you've, you've kind of simplified that process yeah. by, by one. I mean, I guess, I guess you come into the wholesaling space was like you living in 2023 and then going back to 1950 and you're like, <laughs> it was nuts. Let's be honest. It was like, you <laughs> yeah, I, I saw a hole that needed to be filled quick Yeah, for the, for the new person. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think it's for a lot of people. For a lot of people. We, and I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, I always said, even when, even during my prime, real estate was only one-fifth of my income. Mm -hmm. Was it one-fifth? Yeah, one-fifth of my income. So if I was making $5 million a year, real estate was only a million dollars of wholesaling. Wow. Right? The most I ever got to in wholesaling in the years was $2 million. Right? I ran a very skinny team. Yeah. Right? I know, I know, and... And when you think about making $2 million a year on a three, four person team, uh, that's a good lifestyle. Yeah. But I've been a part of a lot of guys that are that have scaled and got big offices, but they have a hard time. They have so many salespeople. What's the most salespeople you ever had in your office? On this model? Yeah. Wholesaling three. Three people. Yeah, yeah. Three. So, so three folks, including yourself, you do two million dollars and three million dollars in twelve months. Yeah, I know. And we really only had. I had one of the guys. I only had three at one time for maybe three months, though, in that year. Mm -hmm. So, you, you exactly. So that's why I was saying it's more than just the new people. Yeah, it is. It is actual experienced wholesalers and operators don't have good sale process. No, not not. They might have a good sales process, mm, but they definitely don't have good salespeople because they haven't trained them because they don't know how to. They do don't know sale. how to train. And um, yeah. there's nothing wrong with nope. admitting what you don't like. Do you do your own taxes? No, of course not. No, you hire somebody that does it and knows knows better than you. Yeah, and so. You, 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 how many states do you operate in now? I, well, at the peak, we were in like nine or 10 of them. Yeah. We've scaled back to, oh, I think we're in five or six right now. How do you get the confidence to, it's a good question because a lot of people, how do you get the confidence to not, to do it outside of your backyard? I didn't even think, I, I don't know any better. Just did it. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, right? Just did it. So it's like, so. You're saying the numbers you get are so good that I, it doesn't have to be in my backyard. I, I'm just getting great numbers across yes. nine states at one point. Yep. Yep. All over. And as soon as we have the staff to do it again, we will start going wide again. But, you know, we revamped our dispo department. Mm -hmm. Closers got up and walked out at one point. We had to rebuild that department. So, so I, I work closely with a company called Town Square, which I think may be able to help you dispose of your deals. And the reason why I say that is because you work in multiple states. Yeah. And it allows you to post your deals and send them out and work with other people that are also in that area. Mm. Let me ask you a question. So as a very efficient wholesaler, do you think it's easier to find the deal or easier to dispose of the deal? That's a good question. Right? That's, tough. That's a really, really good question. And uh, so with the deal flow is always going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. Because uh, you're, you're good at it. Yeah. And then you're on, on the dispo side, I want to say a good deal always sells itself. But hey, we're in a shift right now where we're having to like, like right now, we are, we are, we have to lock deals up at a better discount in order to get rid of them right now. We are noticing that. Because it's a shaky market in the sense that people are unsure. Unsure. Yeah, they're unsure. So they want to not be over leveraged if anything happens. Yep. Yeah. It's real simple. I mean, it's not hard though, but, you, but have you, but you're still doing deals. Oh God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not, not saying like we were consistent for, up until what 90 days ago mm -hmm. whenever this all happened yeah 
we were 30 to 40 contracts locked up every month. And we would do a projected profit of anywhere between, you know, 900 to 1.1 million projected. And then we would stay on a funded where we would fund and close anywhere from 375 to 500 Mm. every single month. Um, And right now, like we're getting ready to end this month on Monday. I think we're at, I think like 20, two 23 contracts locked up. So what do you lend? What do you lend all of this success to? What was the call? Co- like how people have been doing this for a long time and you, you are simplifying it. So what, what makes you look at it in a simplistic way? It's, it's in my, it's sales. It's, this is a marketing and sales machine. I didn't, I never once day one said I was in the real estate industry <laughs> because I've said many times, I don't know a whole lot about real estate. I really don't. Yeah. Um, I, I'm learning today about real estate because I got the the marketing machine down where I can start picking deals up. Yeah. Um, but I came into it with, I, I wouldn't, hi, I made a, a pact to myself. I wasn't going to hire the first team member until I could do a hundred grand myself in one month. It took me 90 days to do that. hundred grand, one month, 90 days. Um, I was asking my wife, man, I don't want to say something that ain't true. Is it three months or four months? She said, it took you 90 days to get a hundred grand. So as soon as I did that, I went back and looked at how many dials did I make? How much talk time did I have? How many offers did I make? What do you call those? KPIs. Why is that important? Yeah, yeah, I run my business off of it. It's a must. Like, like break it, like break it down to me. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Like you run your business off of KPIs, key performance indicators. Indicators, yeah. But what like... What does it really mean? What does it mean? You got to be able to track. Like when I hire somebody, if I'm going to hire a closer, I can't just put a closer in a seat and say, go get me some deals. Mm. You can't do that. Why not? Well, they'd be, you ain't going to get them. (laughs) You ain't going to get them. If they were that person, they'd be doing it themselves. Yeah. Right. And there's nothing wrong with being on a team. You can make a lot of money being on someone's team. Um, so when, when I hire somebody, the non-negotiables for me, it's not negotiable. You got to be able to dial between 50 to 70 numbers a day, outbound dials. What is an outbound dial? The phone rings at least three times. So I, Write this down, y'all, because yeah. he's giving you free game that took him a while to even get the baseline. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've paid a good oh, amount yeah. of money yeah, to yeah, some yeah. guys to give me that baseline. Yeah. Um, so... It was uh, not negotiables when I hire a, a closer is 50 to 70 dials a day. You got to get between three to four hours of talk time a day. And then you got to make between three to five offers a day. Not negotiable. So, so let's break each one of those KPI. Why is it important to get to make 50 to 70 calls a day? Just, just for you in your head, like if we're, you and I are a management meeting. Yep. And like, oh, Eric, tell me why it's important so I can go back and explain to these folks. Yeah. Uh, the reason for me is the only way it's a contact sport. Okay. It's a contact sport. The, you, you have to, you have to make contact in order to get contracts, right? You Real gotta simple. make contact to get contracts. Period. Period. And so now you're talking about also, what is it? Um, three talk time hours, three, three hours? to four hours of talk time minimum. Why is that important? Because in le- unless you're having you can't get a contract unless you're having quality conversations. So you're, so you're forcing the metric of, I need the phone to ring at least three times, 70 times a day. 70 times a day. I need you to be on the phone for three hours minimum talk time a day. Like I need you talking. So ain't no, wham, bam, thank you, man. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Yep. you like, you need to force a conversation. Yep. And out of those forced conversations or conversations that you're having. You, three to five offers. Three, and why? Offers, not I can give you between 100 to 130. I want a real offer that can be put in a contract. So a real verbal offer. A real verbal offer, yep, that we're willing to put in. A, uh, That's a really right down. Yeah. So I don't think you guys may understand, he just gave you the baseline for running your own business or hiring somebody else. Mm-hmm. 50 to 70 calls a day, three to four hours of talk time, was it three contracts? Three to f- uh, five offers. Three to five offers a, a day. day. Yep. You don't got to go pay 50 grand for that. No. There you go. 
and it, those are real metrics. I live and die by them. And, uh, it's what's produced us our numbers. It's just a standard that you've set. Yeah. If somebody wants to be at the baseline, if they want to run a par game, yep. then they do that. If they want to run above par, they do more than that. Do more than that. If they don't want to be with you, they run below par. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Those KPIs got me the hundred grand in a month. And so you just transferred it and said the team can do it over and over and over. Over and over and over. And so the most you've ever had is three, four, three, four sales three. guys. Three. 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 Yeah. Getting a new office going to have eight seats. Tell me about that. The new office? Yeah. I'm big, excited. Big office. Yeah. Over a little over 6,000 square feet. Getting out of the lease I'm in right now just to, I'm, I'm a big believer in culture. Culture's yeah. a big part of building a company. Mm -hmm. And the office that we're in right now is real chopped up to where it's not a team. You create like a communal area. Yeah. Got yeah. It. So we got a big, uh, it, very similar to what you have. Mm hmm um, it's big open, you know, have a sales pit dispo is going to be right there with them. Transactions going to be right there. So with that them. means you're actually doing deals. If you got an office. Oh yeah. We're doing deals, man. I'm doing, and I'm going to tell you guys how I know he's doing <laughs> deals. So one of the things that, which I was going to suggest to you at lunch too, but I forgot one of the things that, I mean, you don't need them now. I don't want to say that. I want to get, take business from Derek, but one of the things that we, needed in our business was the infrastructure to be able to control all aspects of the mm -hmm. deal, right? I already control the marketing, the outbound. I control locking up the deal. I control dispo. I control trans co transaction coordination, but I didn't control the closing. Mm. So what we did is we brought an attorney inside of our office with a paralegal inside of our office so that deals, so when I tell a homeowner I can close tomorrow, you can really close. I can really close yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And that's the difference between getting some deals and not getting of course. some deals. Is by saying, no, 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 no. I can, like you can come today and sign the paperwork and I'll have you funded tomorrow. Yeah. Or you can meet me here at noon and this whole thing is done because my paralegal says she'll work till eight tonight. I don't have to call another uh, you know, attorney's office or yeah. I don't have to call another closing <laughs> office or title company. It's internal. And so having that control over the entire process allows me to really be able to deliver or, or, you know, even deliver over what most people are able to do. So that was a cool thing. But because I have an attorney in my office, my attorney also works with other wholesalers in the state of North Carolina. His company happens to be one. And so when I call in and be like, hey, what we got today? Oh, well, I'm, I'm tied up. I'm doing a bunch of Eric stuff. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. He's like, are yeah, no. Just North Carolina? Or do they, you guys do all just over Just North Florida? Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah, just North Carolina. All right. And so I'm like, man, so I'm always hearing his company's name. Like, no, we got a couple closings this week for, what's his name? Got a couple closings. So the the numbers are real. This ain't no, it's not Fugazi, they would I say. I can show HUDs on all of them. I know you can. And I, so one thing that I try to do often, because I don't see a lot of people do it, mm -hmm is I show in my C I, I show inside my CRM my real numbers. Yeah. Because I don't see anyone showing their real numbers. But you me. know, here's the thing though. I don't even believe the CRM numbers. Huh? Because you can type Oh, you can want. fake that. You can. I see. I, I ain't faking nothing. I know the closings you got lined yeah. up. That's, yeah. That for me is enough proof right there. Yeah, yeah. Talking about CRM, you, you got a CRM, which I think I'm going to actually buy. I'd love to show it to you, man. Like I'm 12 dead years serious. in the making. Like because you brought it over from your other industry. Yep. You've tweaked it. And and I like when people build products that are for them first. Yeah. And then when I know that you have success yeah. from using the product, I like the idea. And so I'm not, I'm not too, I'm never too too proud or too big to to not go look at something else and be like, this can make us better. So I'm I'm, same I'm way. tell me tell me about it though. What makes it special? So it's, it's not white labeled. It's mm -hmm. not backed by any other, uh, CRM platform. Like this is yours. It's from the ground up started from scratch. You build it. Is it like a cloud base or it's, uh, I have a CRM developer that I've been personally working with for 12 years now. Mm. Um, and we have, it's, it's literally, it was the backbone of res my, my last company. And it was one of the reasons the private equity firm was so interested in us. Uh, it was where we housed all of our data. 
They liked the way the CRM ran. Um, they were gonna, it, that was part of the transaction. Mm. Um, so, you know, we've spent now the f- uh, 12 months now converting it Into to the, the wholesale, wholesale space. space. What can it do? Um, it's, it serves up leads to where a lot of the CRMs you see on the wholesale space are, are open faced where the closers see all the leads and they can go through and cherry pick them. Well, our software, it, the, the closers don't control what lead they get to look at. Mm. So there's a button where it says you click and they, it, the CRM serves them one lead at a time and they have to look at it and they're forced to call it. So you force your closers to call every single lead. They don't get to see the whole list. They can't go and cherry pick deals. Or they they can't think they know what a good lead looks like. The CRM serves them. It starts from the newest lead that comes into the CRM and goes down to the bottom. We can reset it at any time to where we push the closers back up to the top. It has a built-in nurture uh, SMS drip campaign Mm -hmm. that I have uh, built out to where it's, it goes out almost two and a half years right now. So you got, you got, (laughs) if somebody gets in your, (laughs) your, your ecosystem as a seller, you got two and a half years worth of messages that are follow-up messages for you. Yep. Up until nine, uh, 90, up until 121 days from creation to entering the CRM, uh, they get a text message. It's, uh, day one, they get a text seven days, 14 days, 21, then it goes to 60 Mm -hmm. and then it goes 30 days for two and a half years. They're going to follow up is important in this business. Ah, it's huge, man. And, and, and talking about when you're, you're, your your company at at the peak 30, 40 deals a month, right? How many of those came in what I call like unicorns, like the same day, same day signs versus follow-ups? Not enough to talk about. Yeah. I'm, yeah, not so it's all, so it's all follow up. Yeah, all follow up. Unless PPC, don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, I, I love those deals. PPC is a different animal. They're walking into the store. Tell me why you like those. Well, because I close them. The the best I've done is five leads to a contract, but we hover right around eight to nine leads to a contract for PPC. Yeah, I mean they're lay downs cool. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're seeking that yeah. problem solve. Yeah, not, yeah, not a random phone call. Yeah, yeah. Man, so, I like how you simplify things. It, it really reminds me of when I, when I got into this industry, I, I bucked the industry because 1% male response rate was normal for the industry. Yeah. I didn't think that was cool, nor did I have the money to spend on mail. Right. So I was like, I got to make phone calls. And then I focused on one list, the tax lien list. Mm-hmm. And I made lots of money. And then once I made a lot of money doing that, I said, I'm going to go to the probate list. Learned every single thing about it to where I can, because it was a more of a complex seller, right? Mm-hmm. So I know the ins and outs of how they have to do things. But then I slowly just started getting into other, other things. But it really, my bread and butter was like two or different two types of data points. I've never pulled any of that data right there. Never seen it. <laughs> Tax or probate? No, never once. Never bowled it. Either one of those. Killing it. I swear to you. Out of state. Absentee. Absentee owner. That's it. The whole time. That's Absentee why, owner. And data. that's why you feel comfortable hitting these other states because you're like, I, I know this data. I know this. It's just a low hanging fruit. I'm, it's easy to, easy to put. I look at who's going to sell first. A family living in the home or a, a tenant that someone can kick, tell them to move out. Yeah. That's the low hanging fruit. Or even empty. Or empty. So I'm, I'm going for all the low hanging fruit. Then I'll, I'll start pitching the hard stuff. So they stuff. got, so more than likely they got less emotional attachment to the house because they yeah. live out of state. They probably haven't seen it in year or years. Yep. And you're just like. And most of them know they ain't getting what they should get for rent. I always say if I can offer them up, I'm going to make a number up right now. If I can offer you uh, 200 grand for the house and you're getting 800 a month. How long is it going to take you to make 200 grand? Long When's time. the last time you had 200 grand in the bank account? Never. Well, you can today. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to sell you my house. I ain't even got one. I ain't even got one to give you. This is, uh, this, this is cool, man. I, 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 enjoy, 
I enjoy having a conversation where it's simplistic. Yeah. Because it's not this hard. It's not that hard. It's not, man. And so now you're wanting to get into, you got a couple rentals. You want to get into more like real estate, real estate, real estate. Yeah. What, what, is, what, is your, what do you want to do? What do you, what do you and your wife want to do? You know? In the real estate? Yeah. Well, we have a couple Airbnbs right now. Yeah. She loves that. Cool. She loves uh, doing the whole interior designing thing. Uh, she needs to understand it's 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 a business and it's not <laughs> not your living not, not living our in. living room that she's decorating because she can get out of hand with that stuff. Um, so short terms, uh, we we just uh, rehabbed one in Wisconsin. We're gonna rent it out to traveling nurses. Okay. So we, we haven't found our our niche in what we really want to do in the real estate yeah. side of it. But we'll we'll figure that out. I took you by one of my development commercial joints. Did that did that interest you, or is that too much? You it all to, does. It all does. Yeah. It really does. It's That's, real simple. It is, and it. So, I'm I'm good at overcomplicating things. I really am. <laughs> Not wholesaling. Not the wholesaling model, <laughs> but uh, like, I I don't the whole rentals and there's an equation to it all, and until I really know it, because I. Um, it's just the lack of confidence, I think, right now. Yeah. Am I buying this at the right? The Am I getting the right rent? All that stuff. Because there is an equation to it. Yeah. And I, sure. don't, I don't know that. Yeah, but you haven't focused on it either. I haven't. Yeah. I've yeah. been running uh, sales and marketing. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I think the deal that you told me about with the land is that's amazing. Like, Love it. Those are things. And like you, the project I showed you, building, I told you how we bought it. Love it. Knock it down. Ask somebody smarter than you, what am I allowed to put here? What makes the most sense? They draw it. This guy approves it. Mm -hmm. He'll find somebody to do it. Yeah. And it's like, okay, how much rent can I get? So you, you know, it's, so it's, it's fairly, it's fairly simple. simple. There's just some equations that you do got to plug in. Of course. But I, that's why I love real estate. It's no, no two things are the same. Right. When you, when you're talking to new wholesalers, you talk to new wholesalers, they hit you up. They do, man. Um, I'm trying to get my name out there as much as I can to, yeah. to help. Yeah. Because I believe I, I, I have a lot of help to give. Yeah, for sure. With my knowledge and stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I cross paths with quite a few. What What is the number one thing you try to tell them, like, as they're coming up? Like, just, just some guidance. Um, if you're focusing on anything other than sales and marketing, you're focused on the wrong thing if you're in the wholesaling game. Yeah. Um, I let them know this is not going to be easy. There's going to be days you feel like giving up, right? Um, I don't care what level you're at. There's days. We all have those days. We tell them. Um, and uh, that if they can, especially for wholesaling, because that's, that's really the audience that, that reaches out to me right now is yeah. just wholesalers. Which is, I think is crazy because it should be other people too. But mm -hmm. the sales skills is some of you realtors need to step your game up too. I just spoke at an event uh, full of realtors two days ago, and that yeah, they need help too. <laughs> they need help. They need a lot of help. Um, but it's just a fact of it's a contact sport. This is sport. You yeah. got to have high energy. I always go back to the mindset. As crazy as that may sound, but just be ready to to uh, pound the phones, make a ton of offers, and um, don't quit before the miracle happens. Yeah. And watch out, watch out who you listen to. But you know, one thing I try to look at too is that most people that start this business try to duplicate your business. And which the, is? Which is, you're doing 30 deals a month. Oh yeah. You don't need to have a good living. <laughs> one or two. Oh yeah. <laughs> Our average deal size for a long time was 33000 Our average. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can live off a deal. That's, that's a yearly salary in America. Yeah. So I, I always caution people to try not to get too big too fast or try to look at some. Don't try to play like Michael Jordan right now. No. Play like the you know, best high school. Yep. Best Worry about that guy. deal. Yeah. Just get the, that one thing. That one deal. Man. Um... I, I enjoy, I enjoy just having, like me, I'm learning about you as the audience has learned about yeah, you. Yeah, we've never met. Never met, dead ass. Like we see yeah. each other at a couple events. Yep. 
But we've never sat. No, no, we're an hour and twenty minutes away from each other, and yeah. I'm like literally. Where do you where do you see yourself? You got any other ventures outside of real estate? Because I I people don't know about a lot of my stuff. People don't even want to hear about it. They're like, oh, well, tell us about real estate, dude. I own so much more. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's not funny you ask that, but one thing I learned from my last business and and the way things went was don't have your eggs in one basket, all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. And I did. Um, I had one source of income and no, there, mm. there wasn't a plan A or B or a B or C, sorry. So right now, wholesaling, obviously going to acquire real estate. Yeah. Um, so we'll have some, we, we have some passive income coming in right mm. now through that. Um, I am putting together some, some things for sales training, which I had zero intentions on this doing. This industry needs it. It needs it. I saw a hole that needed to be filled and I'm more than willing to do that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm more than qualified to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Um, but out, outside of that, it, it's like meeting guys like, like you and some other guys I've met in the industry, the wholesale industry allowed them to do whatever the hell we want to do, do whatever the hell you wanted to through brand, through branding. That's why that was the reason I reached out to you. Yeah. Right. I yeah. didn't reach out to you to figure out how to wholesale. I knew that. Right? Two million, three million, and thirteen million. But not even that. I, I was a very specific reason. True. And your intentions. Your intentions yeah. were right there. You knew exactly and, and that and that's a that's a part of, believe it or not, of every entrepreneur needs to have their own personal brand. I, I agree. Because it helps you achieve things faster. I, I didn't mean, I don't mean you got to go have a course and teach sales or nothing like that, but you need a personal brand yeah. that when people see you, they associate you with X yep. and allows you opportunities to get in rooms faster or there for longer than you could if you didn't have a personal brand. Yep. And, and, and it's smart. I, I, I talk about it. I, I spent a lot of money on my personal brand. Yeah. Uh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is behind my house. I love it. We um, were just at your, uh, uh, the project you were showing me today. Mm -hmm. Guy driving by. Max Maxwell. Yeah, he stops driving me. Driving by the street. Because I have a property that my, my, my dad gave to me and I don't know what to do. And I gave but him advice. But he knew Max Maxwell. Yeah. And I gave him my real phone number. Because I really want to help the guy. Yeah. I'm like, this is my real number. Don't blow me up. This is my real number. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not easy to do. It's not. It's not. not, and we were, and that's a, that's like at least 40 miles an hour road right there. He whipped a Yui, but, but that you, 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 you come off you. I feel like, I feel like the way your energy is, the knowledge you have, the confidence that you have was like a 2008 max. I really do, man. I that, appreciate that. Dead serious. And, and you have that it, and you have that want to help. You've been through some trials and tribulations that yeah. allows you to be selfless you got a beautiful wife beautiful kid like you're just out there like i, I wouldn't mind trading lice with you and then and i when i see that somebody that's somebody i'm like yo i can hang out with that person mm. right because we're at that level where we don't do certain things anymore and we yeah. don't we're like we we enjoy like i told you i was at lunch i was like bro i like staying at home with my wife and in my house Love it. <laughs> you know? That's a good Friday just night. Just the simple me. stuff in life where you're just yeah. like, yeah, man, I don't like, I'll, I'll come do the event, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave the same night because yeah. I want to, my wife's going to be home. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, man. It's me with my kids, man. I love it, man. Um, I usually ask this question before we get out of here. It's real simple. If, if you had the attention of the entire world, mm. I mean, everybody, mm. And you had one minute to give, to say something to entire world. What mm. would you say? I want wow. you to look right there and tell me. The entire world. So second chances are real. Third chances are real. Four chances are real. Um, I don't know what chance that I'm on, but where your feet are today, they don't have to be there tomorrow. It's going to take some work. You're going to have to surround yourself with the right people. You're going to have to make some changes, probably people, places, and things. But I can assure you what we all have in us. Uh, we're, we're here for a reason. You may not know what your purpose is right now, but um, 
we all have a purpose to be here. We're all like, we're all here to live amazing lives. And um, if I had somebody in my corner growing up, and it's not that I didn't have a family that loved me, because that's not what I'm saying, they love me. But if I had somebody that would say, I believe in you just a little bit more often, um, who knows what, you know, where my life would have went. So what I'm saying to anybody that's looking right now, if nobody has told you today that they believe in you, I promise you this guy right here believes in you until you can believe in yourself. And I say that as a complete stranger, but again, allow me to be that voice of reason that you can do anything. I mean, anything you put your mind to. So if no one's told you they believe in you today, this guy does. If no one's told you they love you, this guy does. Let's win together. Awesome, man. That was deep. I like that Appreciate was probably it. one of my best ones. I like I, I like that one. Appreciate it. I swear you remind me of me, bro. Ah. I dead ass. I'm just like, because when you when you feel so good inside, when you cause you've 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 you hit this place in your life where you you crawled out of the gutter. Gutter. Again. And you're like, I gotta share this message with everybody. Yeah. And it's like the sense of like hope. Yeah. I could tell it's genuine, man. I enjoyed this, Eric. I, I really did, it, man. man. We're about to go watch a basketball game. Yeah. I think, is Steph Curry going to be there? I don't know if he is, but my son, he's going to be w looking for us. All right, cool. Let's yeah. do it, man. Listen, thank you guys so much for tuning into the Max Maxwell Show. I am your host, Max Maxwell. If you're listening to this on podcast land, please give me a review and five stars. And all my YouTube subscribers, I love you. I'm still here with you. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you loved about this guy. Make sure you go follow him too because I'm going to leave everything down in the description. And also, if you're not subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to smash that like button. This is Max Maxwell and this is the Max Maxwell Show. I'm out. Peace.